How's it going guys? Nino Gino here and I just this video is a little late obviously. Uh this is my pickups video from Too Many Games 2018. How's it going guys? Uh yeah, there's not much I can say about Too Many Games that it's well basically that it is my favorite con of the year just for the simple fact that there's so much there to look at, buy, get so many people there to talk to. Always a lot going on at that place. And this is what I brought back. So let's dive right into it. Uh, one thing I got was the Sega Visions. I love these. They're like the Nintendo powers of Sega. Uh, a lot of cool stuff in these. I love them a lot. Um, awesome good reads. Really nostalgic for them. I got off this off my buddy Chuck. He has a booth there. He sells uh, paintings. It's a Akuma PS1 controller. Um, 15th anniversary fight stick controller. Glad to add it. Akuma's one of my favorite Street Fighter characters, right next to Ryu. Off my buddy Retro Rat. He was doing the always the buy two get one free. Uh, There's two NES boxes I needed. Didn't need the carts, but I bought them anyways, and I got one game that I wanted for free. Uh, Crystal Mines box. And Venice Beach Volleyball box. And uh, Gunstar Heroes. It's a running gun, basically like Contra for the Sega Genesis. Very underrated game. Very good game. Uh, if you don't have it, you should definitely pick it up. I also got, right next to him was my buddy Mike, a.k.a. the D-Game Doctor. I got three manuals off of him that I needed to complete some games. Nubagala's, uh, Nubagala's Ambition 2. Um, Gargoyle's Quest 2. And a manual for Kid Clown and Nightmare World. Thanks, Mike, for the awesome deal on these. Same with Chris. Um, another kid that I know there that goes to the shows. He's not a vendor, but he's a, he walks around. He's always there to buy. Him and his uh, fiance, uh, Dan and Ashley. I got a Chrono Trigger manual. And it also has the map. I traded him two uh, NES manuals for this. And I was glad to do the trade. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, and that's my collection. Um, off my buddies from the Bad Graphics Gamers, Buzzy, J, and Wyatt, I got some manuals. One was Last Action Hero. These complete some NES games that I have. Thunder and Lightning. Cliffhanger. And Dragon Fighter. Awesome underrated game right here. And I also got off of them two NES games that I needed for my collection. These are not normal NES games, these are PAL games. One is Super Mario Bros. Tetris Nintendo World Cup Championship. I have the manual for this. I'm not sure if they ever made a box for this as this was their packet. If there was an actual box for this, please let me know in the comments down below. If anyone knows if there was, I don't believe that there was, but I have been wrong before. And I got this off them. Um, Probably not many people even know about this game or knew what it was there, but I did. And that was Banana Prince Complete in Box. Um, it's a PAL exclusive. It's almost like a Mario Brothers game. Um, I haven't played much of it. I tend to, but it's hard to play some of these games considering they're in a different language. Uh, but this was never released here, and for these two games to be North American side is definitely uncommon, so pick them up when you see them. And, uh, yeah, I'm glad to add these. I also got off my buddy Carlson, who always has the best import stuff there. Uh, I've been wanting this game for a while, and that is Transformers for Famicom. This is complete in box. I have already beaten this game. It is beatable. Um, it is hard. I'm not going to say it's not, but patience. Patience is everything on NES games and Famicom and stuff like this. The second stage is the hardest. You get past the second stage, you're good. Uh, but this is actually, to me, a fun game. Uh, yes, one hit deaths suck, but that's why you're playing NES games, because they're hard. I also got this off my buddy Anthony. He runs Duckle Land Games. He always has a booth there. And a um, buddy of mine. And it's a Mario Brothers Game & Watch. And this is the trifle, the open up one. Uh, I love these things. These bring back nostalgic of me being on the bus when I was a kid. I had the Mario Cement one, 
my uh, one buddy actually had one of these. I got to play it occasionally. Uh, and they're just always, always neat things that definitely bring back memories for me when I was a kid. And same with Tiger handhelds. I had them as a kid too. I think every kid had them that played games. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Next is the big haul of my time at Too Many Games. And uh, that was off my buddy Eric that I just met. Uh, he actually did all the arcades for the show. Or at least most of them that I know about. And uh, he sold me a lot of arcade stuff. So He also let me dig through the back of his truck the one night. Which was awesome because I like doing that. And uh, actually, oh, hold up. I forgot about these. I got these off of Jay from the Game Chasers. Talking about digging through uh, people's stuff. Uh, he gave me these basically for the price of one of them. Uh, I gave him, um, the next day I gave him actually a G.I. Joe's uh, uh, board game. Because I know he likes G.I. Joe's and I know he likes board games. And he hooked me up on a great deal on both of these. And that is Rampage Complete Unbox for the Sega Master System. And a game I've been looking for and it's a good shooter. Philios. Really good shooter. Should definitely try this out. These are both complete in box and mint. And uh, he gave me those too. But sorry, back to Eric. I actually got out of the back of his truck were these little gems. I got a manual for a Famicom. I also got this Famicom system. It had no uh, power supply with it, but I have a power supply. This thing is pretty nice, actually. It's, uh, and it works. I've already tested it. It does work. So I have, now I own a Famicom. Now I don't have to use the honeybees that I have anymore. And I got this disc system, Famicom computer disc system, HVC by Nintendo. This is like the bypass for it. Uh, I heard this is the best way to play the Famicom disc system games because you could just burn them onto a stick. And this is pretty uncommon from what I understand. He hooked me up on a, awesome deal with them and when I was also on the back of the truck I was looking through arcade stuff and whatnots and I also found these MBS carts um, Cyberlip I have the AES now I have both AES and MBS good running gun shooter game definitely definitely worth having and Samurai Showdown 3 um, I'm not a huge Samurai Showdown fan but this is definitely a good fighting series it's definitely sought after, and that is actually a good game. Uh, at his booth that he had there, because he also had a booth there that he had a table with uh, some arcade boards set up on it. I pretty much bought most of them. And uh, he had an MVS one slot. My buddy Jamie bought the one slot, and I bought this game. This is Windjammers. Probably one of the top ten games on uh, Neo Geo. It's made by Data East. Awesome game. They've redone this game on so many different systems already because it's worth it and uh, definitely glad to have this in my collection and now we move on to the bigger stuff one of the first things that I bought off him I saw it. I own um, a CPS 2 system I saw this and I said I had to have this also it being what it is and that was the Street Fighter 2 or sorry Street Fighter Alpha 3 CPS 2 board this is the B board this is the North American board. Um, I also got off him because I made him split this apart originally the first day. And then the second day I said, well, how about I just take the A board off you as well? Because I could always use a backup. Supposedly these are known to go eventually. So now I have two of them just in case that does happen. And uh, how it works is the A board, which is this, which is North America says USA on it. These are region locked and... I'm not sure if the games are region locked, but these come in different colors. Like, there's a Korean one, there's a Japanese one, there's yellow, green, blue, black. And these go on just like so, and the pins. And it pushes down in, and that's just like a big, giant cartridge. And here's where your hookups are for everything else. Your uh, different modes over here for volume and whatnot, and a fan. But yep. I uh, saw this and I knew I had to have it. I also got off of him 
some uh, handy dandy arcade games. And this one, right here, I do not, I do not have the right way to play it yet, but I will. This is Time Killers. Now in this game, you need a five button control just like Mortal Kombat. This is the best way to play it from what I understand. Because you control the arms, each arm left and right, the legs left and right, and the head to combat with. So you need a five button control panel and whatnot. Which I don't have, but I've been looking for one. If not, I will just make one. And that's the best way to play this game. They supposedly released this game on the Sega Genesis. I heard it's not that good. I heard this is definitely the way to play it. So, I'm on my lookout for a Mortal Kombat machine, or I will just make something that will work for it. But, if anyone out there has one, let me know. Please comment down below. And we will definitely be talking about it. Oh, these are the best way to keep these. I saw these. He had them like this. They're in the priority mailboxes. They keep them nice, secure, and uh, they're definitely safe in there. I bought these little bags for anti-shock just in case, a little extra protection. And this is Double Dragon 3, the arcade. Um, not my favorite Double Dragon by any means, but Double Dragon's still a fun game. I don't care what anyone says. Um, glad to have this. I also have the manual for this as well that I've actually picked up recently. Not off of him, off of someone else. It's not up here though, surprisingly. But, um, it's still a fun game. The Rosetta Stone, like I said, is not the best game of all of them, without a doubt. But, it's still Double Dragon. Maybe most people wouldn't be interested in it, but still in all, not about that even to be. Another game that I got here. Definitely an uncommon game. Probably a lot of people never even heard about it. This is Rad Action. It's a platformer game where I believe I believe you're a mouse. But it's a different kind of platformer game. Uh, kind of neat, kind of fun. Definitely, definitely different. Um, and it's, you know, it's alright. It's not bad. Um, not much I can really say about it. I played it for a little bit. And then I also picked up off of him. And this is the big one for me, honestly. And this came with the manual. This came with a third player harness. Um, this game is definitely a sought after game. Uh, I saw it the first day and I, I just couldn't, couldn't do it. I just didn't, the price didn't feel right to me. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought, and I'm like, you know what, I'll probably never see this again the way it is. With the low number on it, like, I'll never see it. And it's an EA game, um, and that is Battletoads. This is the actual original manual for it, which isn't expensive, but you don't ever see it. But this, this is expensive. And this is the actual Battletoads board. Uh, this game is awesome. That's all I can say. A lot of fun. Uh, a lot of quarters and you can beat this. Uh, it's not like the NES version, even though it has some parts to it, but there are definitely some awesome parts to this. And uh, right here it says Battletoads on the board. In case anyone wants to say I'm not having a Battletoads board. And I actually have number 66 of the boards made. They were numbered. I'm not really exactly sure how many boards there are in existence, but... I know there's not that many and uh, like I said this game is definitely awesome and I got the third player harness adapter for it so I can't play all three people and uh, at the end of the day at the last day I'm like I had to I had to own this game I'll never see it again it's a rare this was released by rare rare doesn't do anything anymore especially with any of their IPs and, uh, well, now they are. They're actually going to make another Battletoads game, which I'm curious to see how that plans out. It might just be a copy of this. But, um, I saw it, and I'm like, I need to, I need to buy that. And I'm glad I did, because I know I'll probably never see one of these again if I didn't buy it. And he also had a couple other things there, but I was out of money at that time. Uh, one of them I actually bought after the con. I bought a Mighty Pang CPS2 full kit, complete in the box. It was never open. It was open, but it was really definitely never played. 
Um, the marquee was never even done up. None of the stickers were taken off the sheets. I have it. I'll do a video about that in uh, maybe the next one. And uh, he also had a Bucky O'Hair board that I was definitely interested in, but he had to do some repairs to it before he'd sell it. Um, I've never seen that before in my life. But uh, I can't wait to see him again at the next convention. Uh, pretty sure he's doing too many games again this year. Ooh, sorry. This year. And uh, I hope to see him down there. Like I said, there's not much I can say about the con. It's amazing. There's always something there. This year, last year I bought a ton of NES stuff and uh, some Sega stuff and manuals. This year I bought a ton of arcade stuff. Um, <laughs> who knows what I'll buy next year. But uh, this is Neo Geno saying keep smashing the buttons and I'll see you in the new year. And uh, let me know what you guys think. Comment down below. And I'll see you.